Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamout.com and Bitamout Live and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is February 11th. And it's a sunny, it's a sunny February 11th around here. It's almost 50 degrees out. It's a beautiful, sunny day. And uh, uh, this is our weekly video. And a look, we'll take a look, as we always do, back at uh, some auction results over on Live Auctioneers from the Global Member Pages and what's happening, what happened this past week on eBay. Some interesting things uh, and some, some, some wonderful opportunities went by. And I think some of you might have hooked up with them. We're going to talk about them a little bit. And uh, we did a video earlier this week. Uh, many of you have seen it, but I'll just mention it uh, for those that you haven't, on Chinese fakes and how to avoid them. And uh, uh, referring to porcelain and bronzes and jades, the whole market in general, because it is just absolutely fraught with copies. Uh, it's at, it's crazy, and uh, there's some helpful things in there. I think on how to how to look at listings, how to discern for yourself, even if you have nominal amounts of knowledge, is the piece likely to be authentic? Is it a cop? What's going on, or is it a copy? And uh, lots of you commented on it, and thank you. And lots of you gave it a thumbs up, and thank you. Uh, that all that helps the algorithm a lot and makes it gets the channel out there more with um, uh, through uh, YouTube. They they tend to promote uh, channels that get lots of interaction from users. So, and as you know, I I, I read all the comments. I don't always comment on them, but um, I, I read every comment that goes on there because what we do is guided heavily by what. People tell me they're interested in, and we and we try to we try to accommodate that. Uh, At any rate, uh, check it out if you haven't seen it already. One of the things I wanted to go back and revisit quickly is this jar. Uh, last week, uh, this was a jar that sold at Christie's um, uh, from the Timor collection, and I I commented on it because I, I thought it went for an awfully low price, and I had said, well, unless there's something wrong with it, uh, it should have brought a lot more money. And it turns out uh, Peter Hope, who's uh, commented uh, under that name on, on uh, the video last week, had been in touch with uh, Christie's about it, gotten some photos, gotten some contact, uh, uh, condition reports and whatnot, and a few other people commented as well. Uh, apparently the lid on this jar here is a reproduction. This was something the collector had made for it um, out of plaster. It was a plaster reproduction, which they do do, up here uh, to uh, go with the jar. So the original lid was gone and there were also some condition issues with the jar itself, some repairs or something. And uh, anyway, that's what drove the price down because uh, I, I was dumbstruck. I couldn't understand why this didn't bring twenty-five or thirty-five thousand dollars. Anyway, went for eleven thousand eight hundred and seventy-five, with a four to six thousand dollar estimate. Now the low estimate should have been sort of a heads up that, that there was something, some issue with the jar because Christie's would have otherwise probably estimated it at fifteen to twenty thousand or something. But at any rate, that that was the story behind it. So it's, uh, thanks, thanks to uh, Peter and, and and a couple of others out there that uh, that uh, knew a bit about it and said so. And so we. We can uh, move along from there, knowing what happened. Anyway, it was a pretty jar, regardless. And and, and uh, if you're not in a position to spend twenty-five or thirty-five thousand, uh, you got something nice for under twelve thousand if you bought it. All right, now moseying along over to uh, here. This is uh, something uh, that sold. This is for the global uh, member page users. Uh, we had the Heinemann sale up there, and it, it closed about just about a week ago. I think it closed a week ago today. Uh, before we did the video, and I wanted to go back through it because I think there were some 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 uh, nice things there that didn't go for too much, and there was another sale at Stair Gallery where I think things were absolute. There were some great buys. We'll just put it that way, and there was uh, 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 something I want to talk about regarding a couple blue and white vases, and we're going to get into that. But anyway, you had this this really nice uh, late 19th century, but Ching. Uh, folding floor screen. This was a big screen, and, and screens are such a bargain. I, I, I don't know why. I love screens. I love Chinese screens, Japanese screens, and all that. I own a number of them, and um, for some reason, um, they don't bring a lot of money in the market, and it is a strange dynamic to me. Uh, this great big screen, this is a big thing. It is uh, 
what is it, 71 inches tall, and each panel is, is 16 inches wide. So you can get an idea how large this thing is. Went for $2,250, and it was in nice condition. These things are quite incredible. There's a Coromandel screen uh, with all the precious objects around the outer edge. Now, shipping them is a little bit of an expense. That's true. Getting them shipped, uh, to get this thing shipped, for example, from Heinemann's to here on, on Cape Ann, from Chicago to the Boston area, um, with, a, with a good packer and shipper would, would probably cost $800 or $900 to get it here. Uh, but $2,250, um, I think, is a uh, for a screen like this, is a, I think is an absolute steal. An absolute steal, and I, and I, I don't and I see this fairly often with screens, even at the big auction houses. You can have some spectacular screens, and for some reason they just don't bring um, what uh, comparable artworks bring from the periods. The the, the 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 relationship just seems really crazy. Any rate, uh, somebody I think got a fantastic buy on this, and uh, twenty two hundred and fifty dollars plus the shipping, and what what a thing it would make a room. Absolutely true. Absolutely great. All right. Now, um, and, and I have no idea why screens don't bring a lot of money. And then there were some other things that sold. This was in the, uh, I forget whose sale this was. This was, uh, this, okay, we're getting into the stair gallery stuff. The stair gallery had a sale. It ended just yesterday up in um, Hudson, up in uh, the Hudson area of New York. And things like this, uh, uh, two nice signed, uh, uh, three nice pieces of Satsuma, all signed. Um, a couple of vases, a pair of vases, and a wonderful bowl, all good quality, went for just $125. Um, this gets back to the uh, thing, and I'm going to say it a few times in this video. When you see something in an auction, leave a bid, all right? Somebody got these. This was an absolutely great buy, a great buy for, for these three, three pieces. Um, um, I, th I, think, I, think, I thought the estimate was extremely reasonable, and they went for ha uh, almost half the low estimate. Uh, so go figure, uh, go figure. I, th I think this was an absolutely terrific buy if you're a Satsuma buyer. The next thing up was this. This is a, a little Ming pottery altar vase. It, it was Ming. Um, I know the dealer who originally ha handled it. It's got a Valen Gallery sticker on the bottom. It looks just like the kind of things that Peter Rosenberg would have handled when he, when he owned the company. Um, he, he has since passed away, but he was a, a pretty good friend of mine uh, in, in uh, Connecticut, and he, he was there for many, many years. We did a lot of business together. He was a very sharp guy, and uh, this has an old Valen Gallery label on it. It was seven inches tall and went for just $50. And this, and this was a nice piece of Ming pottery. This was a nicely glazed, very evenly finished, not a lot of flaws, no chips in it. It was in good condition. And uh, 50 bucks, 50 bucks. That's, that's the way to buy Ming pottery. And I think it, it probably didn't bring much because a lot of people looked at it and said, oh, look at the condition, it's gotta be new. This wasn't new, this is an old piece of Ming pottery. And all you had to do was flip it over. And uh, there's Pete's old uh, label, but the base and the finish on it uh, tells the tale of, that it's, it's absolutely authentic. And, and, and the colors are good, this amber glaze, all good. 50 bucks for a good piece of Ming ware. Uh, really, really nice. And then they had this, uh, a very nice Chinese export armorial punch bowl for the American market. Uh, very simply done, quite elegant, uh, uh, 13 inches in diameter. It was not a small, you know, like, like, a, like, a, like a rice bowl. This was a good sized bowl, it was a medium sized punch bowl. $150 against a five to $700 estimate. And the estimate I thought was pretty, right about on the money. Um, so, you know, leave a bid. <laughs> Always leave a bid. And then on to this, a pair of these Famille Rose moon flasks that were made into uh, table lamps. And uh, the, these these we've seen before, uh, and, and these were quite nice. They were about 14 inches tall or so uh, in, in good condition. They're all lamped up and ready to go. Uh, very co good color, really nice colors on these. And the pair of them went for just $900 with a six to $800 estimate. I thought the estimate was extremely low, $900 for the pair. And uh, typically, you know, one of these sells for nine to 1200, typically. Uh, and, and to have them all ready and what a pair of table lamps they would make for a room, just fabulous. And it's, these are the kind of things that if you, if you go to New York or you're in London or, or you know, in a, in a major city in a good area, 
you know, browsing antique shops. Uh, a pair of uh, lamps like these probably would be priced in the uh, $3,500 to $4,500 range pretty comfortably. Um, and uh, I, I was absolutely amazed. That they, I don't know. May, maybe nobody was paying attention last uh, yesterday when this sale was, the other day when this sale was taking place. It took place, the, uh, this, this sale was on February 9th, but um, what an absolute bargain. And then over here to this, a lot, all of the pieces, including the Tureen, this big charger, the platter, two other platters and a platter here. Now, some of them had condition issues. This one has an obvious repair in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, but the Tureen looked pretty good and the charger looked good. And uh, the whole lot went for $250. All right, so uh, so this is the kind of thing, if, you, if you're using the Global Pages, this is why we do it because you, you have the chance to go through. And when you come across lots like this with low estimates and you have time to get to get an inquiry out about condition and then just leave a bid, even if it seems crazy and you think, oh, there's no way in the world I'm gonna get it for that, leave a bid. I, I can't emphasize that enough. That's how uh, really successful dealers uh, buy at auction. Uh, they carpet bomb the sale with bids and they never get everything. You don't really have to worry about that. But if you do get them for that low price, uh, you've got a heck of a deal. When we ran auctions um, um, uh, for over 20 years, uh, we would have dealers come in and, and, and advance collectors with plenty of money. They would come into the um, auction preview and grab a stack of left bid forms. And you could, I think you could put 20 items on a form. And we would have some dealers come through and leave four or five pages of bids, six pages of bids hundreds of bids, 100 bid, 200, 150 bids. They'd literally leave, a, some, one guy we had would leave a bid literally on about half of the auction. And, and some of them were, were crazy, ridiculous bids and the item opened way above, it, would, it, would, it started way above what he had left, but he always left bids. And at the end of every night, every sale, the guy got you know a few of the things he wanted. So it was well worth the, uh, the hand cramps to write out that many left bids. And he had a very, very successful uh, 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 antique shop. He's still in business to this day. Good buying strategy. And then there was this. Again, another set of export porcelains, um, uh, including these hot water plates here and here. Very nice armorial. These are these are Nanking, or Fitzhugh rather. Uh, this one is Nanking. This one has a Fitzhugh border, cobalt, nicely done. And there's, here's one oh, hot water plate that's for the American market, which is a little worn. But these two were absolutely beautiful. Great, great great quality uh somebody bought all three for 150 dollars all right and then moseying along over to here this is something i wanted to talk about a little bit uh, uh we we had these because I, I i i think I, we put them on the global member pages because i was just assuming everybody would know that these were these were cut down bases there was this one and this one and they had very low estimates and for some reason stare didn't put put in the, in the ad that they were cut down and I'll show you what they were cut down from so you get a better idea. Um, this, the one on the right is the one in the auction, and this is a, another example that was uh, in a, in a, at, a, at a Christie's sale. And I just grabbed it as a, as a somewhat comparable example. This jar on the right, where it's cut off, this is where it, you, what it used to have from here up is missing. The upper half of the vase is literally missing. It was cut, it was a cut down Yen Yen vase. And the seller had, for some reason, the family had two of these. And I suspect they were, they just bought them that way or owned them and they were damaged and they had them cut to sort of make an assembled pair out of them. They're not quite identical. This one has a rain border around the, around the rim and the other one doesn't. But uh, um, uh, let's see here. This one doesn't have the rain border, but it's very similar, obviously, Kung Chi. And um, uh, this one uh, did have the rain border, but you notice they have the same lids and so forth. They may have bought them together from a dealer to put on a shelf. They may have bought them and not known they were cut down too. It's entirely possible. Uh, but at any rate, um, uh, these were reduced in height and they ended up bringing $4,000. And uh, I had a bunch of inquiries about this asking me the deal and I kept I said to him, uh, I think I had five inquiries about this pair, these two vases uh, from people that were, were interested. And I did tell them these are reduced in height, obviously, uh, 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 based on the uh, bare porcelain at the top. When, when you see a, a piece like this, uh, check to see if there's any glaze around this top edge. 
uh, because vases, open vases, typically are nearly always glazed over the rims. Jars with covers are not often not glazed over the rims. Some are, but not all. And uh, when you see this form, uh, you always want to check and say, what, what's that form? Uh, look it up and find other Chinese comparables, and you, you won't find this form. Um, in a Chinese jar that's that's complete. You just, they didn't make them this way. They made them with the long necks. But anyway, they both brought around $4,000, $4,042.50 respectively. Uh, had they been complete, they would have brought in the, probably in the in the, in the the 10 to $15,000 range. So I, I hope everybody understood that, that the pieces were cut. And we had lots of people that asked and I told them, and I, I doubt they were participating um, beyond the maybe the low estimate or something. I generally took that position that if you really like them, um, and the the upper half being not not being there doesn't bother you, um, you know you can go up to the low estimate. But um, uh, the, this uh, this selling price uh, indicates to me that uh, 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 maybe uh, somebody thought they were. Um, uh, uh, come, come, they, a few people thought they were. This was the natural full size. So, anyway, th that that was that. Now, what happened over at eBay last week? A few things happened. There was again. Um, there seemed to be some real bargains. This was one of them. Um, uh, this was a very nice early 19th century Beijing glass uh, long neck vase. Uh, uh, could have even been late 18th century, but a very nice piece of glass. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. Nicely done, nice color. Uh, 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 you notice this big, uh, thick, thick wall. How thickly the walls were done. That was sort of typical of the older ones, the older uh, uh, Beijing glass bottles. And I think somebody got an absolute steal on this um, uh, for, for four hundred and sixty-seven dollars. It was from a seller from Rufes had this. I think that was a fantastic buy uh, uh, for, for what that is. That's a, that's a nice piece of glass. It looked to be in great condition. Beijing glass like this is often has broken necks and all kinds of problems. This looked good all the way through and the surface on it looked very good. The finish, um, uh, the way it was polished down, uh, which indicates to me it was probably made between 1800 and 1830 perhaps, somewhere in there. Nice piece of glass. So somebody, if one of you got it, bravo, goodbye. And then on to this, um, the, uh, this particular form, this shape, generally when people look at these at a glance, they associate them with the rather small export pieces that were four or five inches in diameter, very small. And um, if they're not interested in small export wares, they move on. The problem was that this was not small. This, this thing was uh, uh, about 13 inches in diameter. This was a big piece of porcelain. Had a nice looking bottom on it. Looked to be in good condition all the way around. Uh, beautifully enameled and decorated, made during the late 18th century. Uh, very nicely done all the way through. And somebody picked this up for a very, very reasonable $125. Again, um, uh, uh, when, you, when you look at these listings, uh, always check the dimensions. Always check the dimensions. Because this was an absolute bargain. That was an absolute steal for that. Had it been three or four inches in diameter, yeah, it might have been worth $125, $150. But the thing was it was this big, so it was a, a, a very, very good deal, I think, all the way around. Now, um, an, another good deal was this. Um, this looks like a regular size dinner plate. This was a charger. This thing was about 14 inches in diameter. 18th century, beautifully decorated, very good quality decoration, very clean, wonderful border, uh, in in uh, in very good condition. It had a tiny glaze line right here. That was it for the whole piece. But you know, you just glance at that foot rim, and you know this is an old piece of porcelain, a Qinlong period, uh, beautifully decorated all the way around, and very big, a nice big one. This wasn't a seven or eight inch plate. This was in in, in the charger category. And uh, somebody picked it up for $174 or 128 pounds. Uh, again, and a really good buy. That's a really good buy for one of those. We've seen them here on eBay in the past, and they've brought in this almost identical plates. If you think back, uh, go back a few months, you'll find examples like this that sold on here that are 13, 15 inches in diameter. Those sort of nice size plates uh, uh, bring 400 to 600 dollars. So uh, this this was a good buy also. This was a number of them this week. I was really surprised. 
And uh, this brought what it should have brought. This was a nice looking piece of silk. It was uh, a, a double strip with dragons on each side uh, in good condition. We've seen these th this style of uh, uh, panel before. Nice gilt thread dragons, uh, a few little stains and pulls and whatnot, but not much damage at all, but $1,050. All right, and, and, as, and as we're still seeing, Chinese silks are doing very well. There were a number of good silks on um, on the uh, global member pages this week uh, that sold, and uh, all of them did just fine. All of them did just fine. Even even fairly simple robes um, uh, brought 1,200, 1,600 with, with very little needlework on them. And of course, the more elaborately done ones are still bringing uh, larger and larger sums. All right. And then over to these, this very cute pair. And I don't use the word cute very often, but these were cute. These were nice. Nice little pair of 19th century Famille Rose snuffs. Uh, and uh, pairs of snuffs are sort of unusual. They had Daoguan marks on the bottom. These are not, I don't think, Daoguan. I think they're a bit later, but clearly 19th century. Nicely done. Uh, a little bit of edge fritting down the sides and so forth, but to get a pair of these and in this this sort of you know this sort of form, quite unusual. These were nice, and uh, somebody bought them both for nine hundred and thirty dollars, which I think uh, you, you calculate that in at about four hundred dollars a piece, and but you get a pair. Uh, again, a good value. That was a good value for a snuff bottle collector, and uh, the scenes were interesting, and you could probably do the homework and look it up and see what the scenes were derived from, find the story that goes with them. And uh, then along to this, another pretty good buy was this export punch bowl. Rather unusual uh, uh, decoration on it. That's, it caught my eye. I thought it was interestingly decorated. It wasn't clobbered. Somebody actually asked me if this had been clobbered in Europe. I said, no, those are, the, those are Chinese colors. This wasn't added to later. But it uh, uh, had a line in the, ball, in the side. But there's the foot rim on it. Obviously an 18th century uh, uh, base. Uh, nice looking, looked a little dirty, but overall, uh, nice little bowl, 13 inches in diameter, went for $238. All right, again, it, it was a good week for the export buyer. That's all I can say. Uh, it was a very on 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 the on, the, on uh, the global pages as well as on eBay. If you're an export porcelain buyer and you missed it, I'm sorry. <laughs> but last week was a very good week for them. And I think it's just because people just don't leave bids. I think it's I think it's, you look back at them and say, oh, I would have bought it. Uh, uh, going that extra few seconds and leaving a bid makes all the difference in the world on things. And then there was this. There were two of these from the same seller. They weren't identical. They were similar. And they brought roughly the same price. But what was interesting was that this one was much better than the next one. And we're going to go through just for a second and explain why. All right. So, so if one of you bought one of these or bought this one, good on you. The, the, this is a, 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 a bow with a Nanking border on it, these arrows. You see these very nicely done arrows, very carefully decorated. And all of this work here, these sprays are very meticulously done, beautifully done, very tight, very organized, uh, very strong uh, control, uh, really strong control of the brush through here. Uh, when they did this, uh, uh, quite exceptional. And then there was this one that sold um, this, from the same collection, pretty similar. You'd say, oh, they look they look identical. But when you pu pull them in close, they're not identical. Um, there are less petals here, less flowers. And the border, the spear border, is not as tightly defined anymore. It's a slightly uh, less high quality uh, decoration. All right, very similar in many, many regards, but that slight difference uh, uh, is really a sort of a line between the two and you have to see a lot of them to compare them and um, this one was nicely done but not as tightly done not as complex not quite as complex and uh, this one sold for $361 but the superior one went for just 386 so for a little bit more another 20 bucks you could somebody got this and this was the one that you really wanted to really wanted to buy and it was a pretty good sized piece of porcelain too. This thing was 18 inches in diameter. So it's this big. This is a big piece of porcelain, not some six inch dish. And uh, because it's export wares, for some reason they don't, you know, they don't bring the same money uh, despite the high quality as a uh, uh, Chinese porcelain made for the domestic market of this quality. If you have a bowl that has this sort of fineness of detail that's 18th century that was meant for the Chinese market, uh, that, that wasn't going to be exported. Uh, a porcelain, big piece of porcelain like this would easily sell for uh, four to six thousand dollars. 
So uh, uh, Chinese export wares are such a bargain right now. It's, 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 it's stunning. All right, and it's something to keep in mind. And I don't know why, I don't know why, uh, but, but uh, uh, that's the simple tr truth to it. And then there was this, this nice uh, uh, Wu Tsai, they have this, this Femi Ver, it's really not, it's really Wu Tsai. Uh, Kangxi period dish, had a couple of chips next to the foot rim, uh, went for $840, and it was eight and a half inches diameter. But one of the things that was nice about this that I liked in particular, was that there isn't a lot of, has a, has a, has a, has a, um, a Chenhua mark on the back, which is, is apocryphal, of course, but uh, uh, these bowls, with, in this enamel, uh, often when these enamels, you often see the center of the bowl has lots of wear. The, the plate got worn down because it was used a lot in the West when it got here, and uh, you'll see wear all over it. That's not a chip, that's just with the photo, cut it off. There's, there's the full plate. And uh, there's no wear in the middle of this at all. It looks to be in wonderful condition. It looks to be old, it looks fine. Here's the foot rim on it, it looks absolutely fine. And um, a couple of, a couple of uh, little nicks and things there, nothing, nothing to worry about. $840, so it brought good money, because, I think because the enameling was in so, so intact. It was in beautiful condition. All right, and then over to this, a nice little Republic period vase with boys uh, playing, and he's, 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 got, he's got the uh, chime up on the, up on the, up on the pole and whatnot, and uh, let's see, how big was it? Seven and a half inches, but Republic period in nice quality all the way around, um, had a Chin Lung mark on the bottom, which of course is not uh, uh, correct, it's not a Chin Lung vase, but, but, you know, typical Republic wares, and uh, did well. It brought $1,187. The Republic market is still very strong for authentic pieces. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, there's an awful lot of modern copies out there of uh, copies of Chin Lung pieces and other pieces, and the sellers know, this is again getting back to fakes, they know they can't sell them as mark and period, but they could maybe try to peddle it off as being Republic. And uh, again, I want to say that during the Republic period, uh, they did not make as many, nowhere near as many, um, Qinlong, Yongchen, Kangxi, uh, even Jing copies as are appearing on the market. The, the ratios are, are just crazy. They just didn't make that many. They did them once in a while, and they're usually pretty easy to spot. But if it really, really looks like an 18th century one, but you know it's not, and they're claiming it's Republic, it's pretty safe to assume it's new, all right, in most cases, if you know the difference. And then there was this jar. This was a really curious little jar. Uh, uh, the decoration is a fairly well-known, if I get the page to load, we'll be in good shape here. Come on. There we go. Um, here's the bottom of it, okay. Here's the side of it. And it, you all recognize this pattern. You see it often on Chinese uh, export wares uh, from, the, from the 1780s or so. It's, a, it's almost a stock, like a stock pattern. It's a pattern they used a lot on platters and dinner services and on mugs especially, and sometimes on, 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 on taller uh, hollow wares, vases, garniture sets, and so forth. But this is a very unusual form for this pattern. And it, it was clearly okay. Um, and uh, I, it's not a form, I, I, I can't remember seeing this exact form before. But at any rate, somebody picked it up, I think, and they paid a fair price. They paid $667. Uh, obviously, a number of people recognized that this was unusual, but I think it's very unusual. And um, they had it listed as uh, uh, Jai, Jai, Jai Ching period, 1760 to 1820. Um, uh, that wasn't the Jai Ching period. Uh, that was the era, but um, it was, uh, it was uh, Chin, this was made during the Qin Lung period. Uh, around 1780. Uh, the, the Jai Jing period started in 1796, so uh, the seller, I think, got a little confused on his dates or something. But anyway, I thought that was a good buy. That was because it's interesting and unusual. And if you're a Chinese export collector, when was the last time you saw this shape um, with that pattern? And, and I can't think of one. I can't, I'm sure I have, but I, I but at the moment, I, I couldn't think of one when I saw it come up. And then you had this, this nice piece of 18th century uh, 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 Chinese Amari export. Um, it looks a lot like the, in England, they made Mason's ironstone platters that look just like this. They made copies because these were so popular um, in England in particular. But this was a Chinese example, nicely done. Somebody picked it up for $260. Uh, and this was pretty good size too. This was uh, 37 centimeters, so it was about 16 inches wide. Nice big piece of porcelain. Again. 
very reasonable, very reasonable for the quality. And then uh, getting over to this, this is a, a pair of little Ming export dishes that uh, seller had up and they ended up going for $1,408. But they had underglazed red decoration as well as underglazed blue. And as we've talked about it many times, uh, underglazed red and underglazed blue in combination was sort of a tricky thing to work out when firing, often a lot of problems. And these came out with particularly nice color. The, the, the red came out really nice, really, really nicely. Um, and, and the pattern is, uh, of course, uh, uh, a fairly classic one, but the, with the addition of the, uh, the fish and the red flowers, which is, makes it rather unusual. All right, but it's a, a well-known uh, Chinese pattern for the Japanese market. And uh, then on to this. This is a reappearance. Uh, this sold a few weeks ago uh, for $1,260. Nice transitional jar. I talked about it. And for some reason, somebody didn't pay their bill, it seems. And uh, the guy had to relist it. And it went this time for just a little less. It went for $1,249.99 instead of $1,260. So it brought, uh, you know, $11.00. Or ten dollars in a cent less than it did last time around something like that very very close um as a hairline the rim there's a little bit of a repair uh which was in there and it, maybe the guy that bought it before didn't bother re reading the condition reports okay once you see any, every time you see a piece you like always think immediately what's the condition 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 keep doing that uh, you know get a hold of the seller if there's no condition mentioned in a listing whether it's on uh, on on eBay or uh, live auctioneers or wherever you're looking uh, uh, send them a quick note to the uh, to the seller and say what's the condition any work been done to it have you blacklit the thing to make sure it's okay and uh, I always find sellers are very happy to accommodate that um, uh, I, 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 I get in touch with sellers all the time and um, they're, they're more than happy because they don't want the headache later if something is something is wrong with it and they don't bother telling you and it just comes back on them and it's, it's just not worth it it's just not worth it and then uh, that's about it for the sales for the week there were a lot of things that sold uh, and we've got a number of things picked out already to go in this week's newsletter page um, on uh, on the bit amount site as, as you know that's where we put them all each week here they are. Here are all the items from last week, and we'll repopulate this whole page uh, again uh, today, uh, Friday, uh, for the upcoming week, as we always do. Um, uh, this was something I particularly liked. I meant to mention this. This was a wonderful little coral snuff bottle, and um, I'm not a big snuff bottle buyer, but um, I thought the color of this was just terrific. It's got some blemishes in it, like, like you see in natural coral. It doesn't bother me at all. I actually like it. But the color of this bottle um, was really good, really, really good. Uh, and I think the little, the little um, flaws in the coral material itself um, held the value down, so it made it affordable. But this, this is, is, as a piece of coral goes, this, this has a, a really good color really good color just a beautiful it's one of my favorite it's almost the color of the chair i'm sitting in i love that color and uh, you see we use it around the website a bit too <laughs> but it's one of my favorite colors and somebody bought it for 248 dollars all right that was a good buy all right and then over here this is coming up this week this is a nifty thing it's a uh, street performer uh, watercolor 19th century it's got some wear to it it isn't in fabulous condition but it's a really interesting scene. And uh, uh, here you have all the masks and so forth and the little fellow on the pony um, and so forth. Uh, but a nice old drawing. I like it. I like it with the rustic service. I do. It's 19, mid to late 19th century. It's, it's only got one bid right now. It just came up last night. The seller, I don't know. Red Bat 888 in uh, California. They're fairly new to eBay. They've only got 108 uh, uh, feedbacks. But um, uh, this is a nice little painting, and it needs a frame, it needs a nice mat, and it needs a good home. And it would be, I think it would be an interesting thing to own, and I think it's something that you would enjoy. I think people that come to your house and you have guests and they look around and they go, that's interesting, what is that? And uh, I, I, I think it's the kind of thing that if you can pick it up, it would be, uh, you get a lot of comments from people. And then also is this, this, this very interesting little piece of cloisonne. It's a late Qing example. It's not really, it's not an old one, it's not Ming, it's not that. But it has a, a, a rather unusual Christian um, uh, medallion in the center, all right, for the Catholic Church. Because there was a, a Christian movement, uh, a Christian activity in China that not a lot of people are familiar with. But this, this is a pr 
pretty nice looking little piece of cloisonne and uh, it's fairly it just went up night heron has it it's up to four dollars and 25 cents it's a new listing but that i think is that'll be in the newsletter page this week and i think it is worth looking at i think it is and they also have this this rather nice um uh long Quan celadon ming plate this is not a copy i don't think it is a copy some they somebody scratched something into the bottom of it at one point this wasn't part of it originally uh, but they sometimes did that. You can see the scratch marks in it. But the, the the iron foot on it looks, the iron ring looks good. The center of it looks pretty good. Uh, it's up to just, it's got seven, how it got seven bids is only up to $9. I, I can never understand that. But um, somebody must be bidding, you know, $1 increments. It's eight inches and in, almost nine inches in diameter. It's a small dish. But uh, nice looking plate ought to bring five to $700 and that kind of thing. Okay. And that's about it for the week. Um, um, uh, we'll be updating the global member pages as we do every, we do it twice a week, full update on, on uh, for the live auctioneers stuff. Uh, we'll be doing that tomorrow morning, uh, sometime before probably 10 o'clock. And there's a number of listings in there, the things that we just, I, I was just going through some stuff before we did the video today, found a bunch of things that were pretty interesting. And uh, uh, we'll have them in there. And uh, so, as I said, you know, you go through those listings and you, you use the, you use the, you pay the four bucks a month to use the page, uh, leave bids, leave bids, register, don't click the registration button. I heard from somebody the other day that they, 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 <laughs> they had bookmarked a whole bunch of stuff for an auction and then they had to scramble at the last minute to get registered because they forgot to hit the register button. Whenever you see an auction you like on, on these sites, if you, if you use live auctioneers, um, register the minute you see the auction. There's no, you don't, it doesn't mean you have to do anything, but at least you're registered so that if you forget about it and you come back to it, then you're not in a panic trying to get registered for the sale. Register a week in advance for every sale that looks possibly interesting to you. Get that out of the way and then you're not hung up on it when the time comes because some of these smaller auctioneers that use live auctioneers, if they're within an hour, a half an hour of starting their sale, they may not get to you for a registration and then you'll be locked out and you won't be able to participate. So always register early, okay? And thanks so much for watching this week and uh, leave a comment as always, please do. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't so far. Visit us over at bitamount.com and bitamount live and um, all that other good stuff. All righty, have a wonderful weekend and uh, we'll be back next week. We got a, we got a, an extra, the extra video working on. Um, we didn't do one on the on my collection stuff this week because I the uh, the one on fakes was a, a little bit time consuming and I had a couple of things come up and I I, I couldn't be here for a day or two. But um, um, you know uh, we'll be back next week with the regular stuff. So have a great weekend and um, um, thanks for watching. Thank you very much. Bye bye.